Hey, fair warning here, this video won't be edited at all, other than like voice clips being put together. So, listen to this like a podcast while you do something like grind a Professor Oak challenge or doing the, a call from the Death's Quest. Pokemon and writing. What do these things have in common? I love them both. Believe it or not, since I've been a kid, I've had a great love for writing. Listening to this video, you can tell I'm not the best at it yet. But that doesn't stop me. Last night, I was laying in bed around 4am-ish, wishing I could fall back asleep. I thought about what I would do to make Pokemon Scarlet and Violet better. One thing led to another, and I was completely rewriting Pokemon games in my mind. I realized, oh shoot, this is content. So here I am, getting ready to share how I'd rewrite the Kanto games. Kanto and Johto are known for having a lack of story, so I'm going to have a lot of stuff to make up. If I make this video a series, just know from Gen 3 onwards the stories will be less fantasy. Alright, let's get into it. You are Red, a trainer from Pallet Town who just became loyal to get a starter Pokemon. For the purposes of this video, we're gonna have Red use Squirtle. I don't care for Charmander, no offense. You leave Pallet Town to Viridian City, we run a few errands, and you're taught how to catch Pokemon by a drunk man. While heading through Viridian Forest, you notice a couple of suspicious looking men wearing black and red, having a two on one battle with a young lady. You jump in, and sure enough, it was Team Rocket. You help defeat them alongside this young lady, and afterwards, she explains double battles to you. You eventually get through Viridian Forest, and you can waddle on into Pewter City. Once you enter Poke Center, you run into an old friend, Blue. You both immediately know what's next. Battle! Using Squirrel, you have no problem taking down Blue's Bulbasaur and Mayo Nidoran. A handsome looking hiker walks up to you immediately after the battle and praises your skill. He recommends the gym challenge and explains all the details that go along with that that a newbie will need to know. Brock was easy to take down with his Diglett, Geodude, and Onyx. This is the battle where your starter is intended to evolve. Upon leaving the gym building, you'll meet a separate handsome hiker who explains to you the phenomenon of Pokemon evolution. Then he gives you an egg which contains a special Pokemon that can evolve into three different Pokemon. This of course is Eevee, and I think it, this is a much more relevant way of obtaining it. He also gives you my own custom item I call the Warm Blanket. A one time use item that will speed up the process of hatching an egg. Throughout the trek to Mount Moon, you see another duo of Team Rocket members seemingly abusing a poor Nidorino, attempting to get to lead him to a Moonstone. After making quick work of the Grants, you see them fleeing off the Mount Moon, so you decide that you should follow them before they do anything bad. By the time you make it to the Poke Center, your Eevee should have evolved, or hatched, I should say, not evolved. It was an egg. Eggs can't evolve. Upon arriving to the Poke Center, if wow, I really did bad while writing the script. This next part says, if talk to one of the NPCs, if you talk to one of the NPCs, they will tell you about Eevee's free evolutions. Also, I feel like if this was my game, it'd have side quests. Not too many, but I'd say a total of 90-ish would fit a small region such as Kanto. Maybe even less, like 70. Now that I think about it. I think there will be a side quest where you have to find three parts hidden on side trails in Mount Moon. If you find and return all of them to a specific NPC, they will make a couple of XP shares. Since they have extras, they give you one. Side quests like that will be scattered all throughout the region. As you enter Mount Moon, you'll come across Blue once more. You swiftly take down his Ivysaur, Nidorino, and Spiro. As you make your way through Mount Moon, you'll notice the deeper you go, there's more and more Team Rocket grunts. Eventually, you'll find an archaeologist who gives you a rock smash, and your choice between paths. One has a dome fossil, and the other has a helix fossil. After mining further into the wall, you'll find an entrance. It turns out you mined into a Team Rocket base. 
You fight your way to the bottom and found yourself staring Rocket Commander Jax in the eyes. Time for a fight. He has a Scrammer and a Drowsy, and his Ace Pokemon Golbat. You defeat him and he teleports out, and suddenly everything is shaking. It's a rock slide. You swiftly get out of there and then watch as the entire building seemingly fades out of existence. The only thing left behind is a golden Pokeball with the Ace Emperor headbutt inside. You use Rock Smash to mine your way out of the cave and you're stopped by Blue once more. After taking out his Ivy Sword and getting rid of on Firo, he'll admit you're ready and allow you to pass. You enter Cerulean City and time to fight Misty. She throws a side up cloister and Starmie at you, and you eliminate all three. You're rewarded with a badge and continue on to Bill Shells. And he turned himself into a small fairy. You help him get out, and he gives you a couple SSN tickets. You head to Vermilion City, where the SSN is stocked. On the way, you see an odd looking truck with ruffling noises coming from under it. It's probably nothing. On the SSN, you're greeted by a flock of wild Team Rocket Grunts. The Robert the SSN. You take them all down and then beat Commander Sylvia and her wiggly tough Chansey and Ace Butterfree. As a fake unit, Captain gives you the team for cut and shows you how to use it. You head to the gym to beat up Lieutenant Surge, but as you cut the tree blocking, Blue comes running out of the building, heads to the Pokemon Center, heals his Pokemon, and immediately challenges you to a battle, saying Lieutenant Surge was the hardest battle yet, and he does not want that to happen not want that to happen to us, man. We must prove that we're ready. You decimate his Ivy Sword, Nino King, Furo, and Electabuzz, he's and he says, you're ready, but be careful. Time for the lieutenant himself. You barely defeat his Magneton, Electabuzz, Voltorb, and Ace Raichu. You could really tell that the gym leaders are getting tougher. As when you exit, a stylish hiker walks up to you. He tells you that the legend of the birds, an old tale of three birds, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, and the immense power. Before he leaves, he tells you that these birds are powerful, and you'll need to be stronger if you want to catch them, so he gives you a rock. It's too heavy to even pick up. You can't walk around it, so you have to use rock smash. But when you do, an odd rock falls out. It's glowing. You better bring it to Professor Oak. As soon as, you see, as, soon as he sees it, his eyes light up. He calls somebody and tells you to return to him when we have our fourth badge. Better come back after finding Erica. On your way back to Vermilion, you find a couple of trainers having a fight. There's no way to get by. You have to take Diglett's tunnel. On your way to Diglett's tunnel, you find an odd man seemingly trying to make his Voltorb explode. You talk to him, and it seems he was trying to teach his Voltorb Flash. He has a spare team and a gym, but he wants his Voltorb to learn it manually. He gives you the basic idea of how to use it and lets you pass. Food Diglett's Tunnel. As you pass through Diglett's Tunnel, you'll notice a surprising lack of Diglett. Sure enough, right behind a smashable rock, you find a Team Rocket. Yay. Turns out they were trying to take all the Diglett and Doug Trio and forcing them to dig out a giant Team Rocket cave. Everyone here just has Diglett here. So, okay, well, I... Okay, my my writing is horrific. Everyone here just has Diglett, so it's no problem for your war portal to take them all out. Finally, you are once again face to face with Jax, one hypno monk, and go back later. You're back on your way through Diglett's tunnel, and you're back to Vermilion. You head up through the underground tunnel and. Through Cerulean to eventually get to Rock Tunnel. Woohoo, another cave. Before entering, a studly hiker named Dan approaches you. He gives you a Pokeball. Psychic explodes! It's a Voltorb. 
He said that he was worried we didn't have any Pokemon that could learn Flash, so he gave us an exploding Pokeball. I'm going to take this chance to explain how HMs work in this game. Essentially, we have both HMs and EMs. Hidden moves and extra moves. A hidden move is how you teach a Pokemon that set HM so it can be used in battle. A EM is how you use them outside of battle. As long as there's a Pokemon in your party that can learn this HM, that HM's EM equivalent will be accessible. Was that confusing? Oh crap. I guess I can paste the script in this description so you guys can read it. That might help. Dan tells you that the cave up ahead is darker than Mount. I just said darker than Mount Moon. Dan tells you that the cave up ahead is darker than the moon, and we're gonna need Flash. Rock tunnel was simple as could be. No team rocket, no blue, and it's a nice relaxing cave for training. And holy cow, it's a ghost! So Lavender Town wasn't the best choice. Let's head straight through the underground tunnel and get to Celadon. On the way, we run into more Team Rocket grunts. I'm sure that means absolutely nothing, and we're not about to find another Team Rocket base. <sighs> One tunnel later, and we're in Celadon. A swift takedown of Blue's Venusaur, Nido King, Fero, Electabuzz, and Haunter, as well as Erika's Parasect, Victory Bell, and Executor, and Ace Vital Room. We can end the video. I spent more time than it seems on this video. Multiple weeks. There were parts where I entirely rewrote multiple sections. At one point, I scrapped the video entirely and came back a few weeks later. I wanted to finish this idea all in one video, but wow, there's a lot, especially in part two. So make sure you make sure you whole subscribe and activate that bell so you don't miss part two when it comes out. If y'all liked this video, don't be afraid to leave a like. And if y'all didn't like this video, then don't be afraid to leave a dislike. Just like, my goodness, I cannot speak today. And if you guys had any ideas for part two, make sure to drop them in the comments for ideas, not algorithm. All right, bye.